What is the Kabbalah? It's Judaism's mystical wisdom. It discusses souls, the deeper meaning of things, and the spiritual system of the heavens. Never heard of this heavenly system? That's okay. Why don't we do what Kabbalah does best? Offer a parable to explain something abstract. You decide to build a home. Your plan actually begins with an intuition of pleasure. Deep within your subconscious, you sense the enormous pleasure of dwelling in a home that truly suits you. That spark of pleasure that invades your brain's desire center. I want a home, you tell yourself. Immediately, your intellect grabs the wheel. You logically justify your desire and analyze the possibilities. Your emotions chime in. How do I feel about this location? Am I comfortable with high windows? You carefully rethink your plan, you discuss it with friends, and are finally ready for action. Sign, build, move. What's all that got to do with heaven? The Kabbalah reveals that when God decided to create the physical world, God first created an entire spiritual system that parallels the experience we've just described. In this first video, we'll take a quick look at the final three stages of this system. In each subsequent video, we will climb one level higher as we explore this supernal chain of command. The mystical work titled The Zohar discusses the existence of three spiritual worlds that precede our own. Their names are Berea, Yetzira, and Asiya. These worlds are inhabited by angels and souls, souls before they descend to earth, and those who have passed away and flourish in the afterlife. In Hebrew, the word Berea means to create something from nothing at all. So in the spiritual world of Berea, for the first time in the entire system, things exist that are aware of their own existence. They feel independent, outside of God. That's amazing, because nothing is independent of God. But in Berea, God hides his presence to enable entities to emerge with a sense of self. Nevertheless, the angels and souls that inhabit Berea feel tremendously close to God and are completely focused on God. Everything here is fragile, extremely close to losing its identity and being blissfully overwhelmed by proximity to God. So, God took it one step further and created the spiritual world of Yetzirah, which means to give shape to something. This is where the sense of independence from God truly begins to take shape. Here, God hides his presence to a far greater degree, which allows the spiritual inhabitants of Yetzirah to develop greater self-awareness. That said, God is still sensed in the spiritual place. And so, God made Asiya, which in Hebrew implies a complete and final product. From its perspective, the sense of independence from God is complete. Asiya has two linked layers. Its top layer consists of spiritual beings, and in its lower layer is our physical universe, the tangible, material world we know so well where we struggle to relate to the divine force that continuously creates us. The good news? Even as we reside in the physical Asiya, our souls keep a connection with those higher worlds from which they emanate. The spiritual Asiya helps us peer beyond the physical. Yetzira empowers us to suspend our self-focus long enough to sense God's presence. And Berea helps us feel blissfully overwhelmed by God's presence, at least momentarily, such as in a moment of meditative prayer. So, we walk planet Earth, but at the same time, we can be firmly rooted in the bliss of spiritual loftiness.